I see all these people using Copilot and using AI to write code. But if something breaks at your company, are you going to be able to debug it? Can you refactor it? No, probably not, because you didn't actually write the code. It all starts with forming good habits and you need to start these things from the beginning of your career. All of these things I'm about to show you, these are the things we have to do at work. So in this video, we're going to show you with a simple function, how to write edge cases, how to test these cases, and how to go a step further and write documentation using JSDoc. My name is Phil. I became a senior developer after the age of 30. If this video becomes of use to you, please Please like, share, and comment on a time you use ChatGPT shamelessly. We've all done it and it's actually good to do it, but do you understand it? I read all my comments and would love to read your takes on this matter. Also, if you want to join a great coding community where we help each other level up, join my free Discord and let's level up together. Today we're going to write like a simple function. I opened up a directory with the readme and I set up the project with the npm project. So I will update it into like, I think there's a repository called in the left field repository called contents. I will push this code there. It's just a simple function edge cases, simple project to test and get documentation, npm install, minus D, capital D, just and JS doc. So that's going to save it as a dev dependency. You can do minus capital D or minus minus save dev. But I think minus capital D is a little bit shorter. And the packages we'll use is just and R J just and JS doc. So as you can see, I already installed just and JS doc as dev dependency. Tendencies. All you would need to do is just run this function here. I already did it, so I'll just do it one more time. Install minus D, just JS doc, and I'll show you guys how to run this stuff. This is going to put stuff inside of your project, a whole bunch of node modules and stuff, but we're going to have to look at this bin JS doc file later on. So the first thing we'll do is actually, a lot of people have been asking me what theme I'm using. The theme I'm using is called Arbiter. I'll have a video about like choosing themes and stuff anyways, but it's just this extension here, or maybe I'll do a video on it, JS extensions, but uh, Arbiter by uh, Wonder Panda. It only has like 3,800 downloads. It's very lightweight. I think One Dark Pro and things like that are very heavy. And this one's pretty lightweight and it separates the colors from like your parameters pretty well. And that's why I like it. Anyways, so we're going to start writing a function. Let's call it sum.js. So very simply, if I write a function, function sum a b, and I'll pass in two arguments a and b and I'll return a plus b. Right? So it's a very short function. It just sums two numbers. There we go. So now if I were to run this, s equals sum one and one, and I console.log s node sum.js, and s should equal two, right? One plus one equals two. So it's a simple function. If I were to write a test here, I could do sum.test.js, right? Now I can write test. Sum should add two numbers together. And then I have a callback here. And then I expect sum of one and one. And I expect that to be two, right? Actually, one more thing. I'll have to do like this. Module.export sum. Now, I am using common JS. I think recently people use like module. So that's like the import and export statement. So if I wanted to use module. I just put module here. For our purposes today, let's use require statements. So now I have a test here. So now I can run npm run test. And I made that function here. So test npm run. Test is going to run just. So if I run npm run test, whoop, I failed the test. That is because in my sum.test, I did not require it. So const sum equals require at dot slash sum. Now I can run my test cases, npm run test. And now it's going to say one passed. I had one test and it passed, right? What if I passed in like I expected sum to equal one plus one to be three? Then it would fail, right? So it would say one failed. Yeah, I expected three, but I received two. Okay, so now this is great and all. There's a lot of uh, edge cases here, right? Like what if one of the parameters is not like passed, right? So what if I do like test, both arguments should be present, right? And then I say function. And then what if I put like expect? And then I, if I did sum on the just one, it should to throw both arguments should be passed. At this point, if I run the test, it's gonna fail one, right? Because it's not, we don't handle this yet. So function did not throw. So expected substituting both arguments should be passed. Let's try to handle that. So now at this point, if A is undefined or B is undefined, throw new error. We should pass both of them, right? We ran both of our functions. So right now B is not being passed. So that's a falsy value. And that's going to throw in both arguments should be passed, right? Now, what if let's go test both arguments 
should be numbers. And I expect some hello, goodbye to throw both arguments should be numbers. So now if I run this code, one failed, right? The hello goodbye function. So function did not throw throw an error here. At this point, maybe if type of a doesn't equal number or type of b doesn't equal number throw a new error both arguments should be numbers right so now if i run my test test suite so one file one test suite and then the there's three tests so they all pass now so that's cool like you can add more expects here like sum 50 50 to be 100 that should pass too now everything passed awesome Awesome. So I know like sum could be a very simple function, but also like I think you have to like write the edge cases in case like someone doesn't pass. So like this is pretty foolproof now, right? I could run like sum on sum on like s equals sum on like null and two. And if I ran node sum.js, it should throw the right error, right? Both arguments should be passed, right? Uh, I guess it was passed, but it was null because it's a falsy value, but both arguments should be passed and be valid but anyways that's kind of like how you'd make this code like very foolproof so that should be fine and then now you have to write the documentation for it right so now you wrote some tests now you can write some documentation so how you write those uh, javascript documentation is you press slash star star and you press enter above the function and it'll give you like uh, the parameters and then what it should return so a should be a number right and b should be a number so number to be passed and added to B, number to be passed and added to A. Okay, so that's a little bit of an explanation of what those parameters are. And it returns a number and it returns a sum of A and B. That's what happens. There's like a bunch of little things you can do, like borrows, async, if it's an async function, then you can put like at definition, as I like to put at description. And you can put takes two numbers and adds them. And then under there, you can put like at example. And then you can put like sum one, one. Anyone that reads this code, they can kind of understand it. But now you probably need to give it to like, give it to someone. You're not gonna, and sometimes they don't want to clone the whole code base or something. So maybe at this time you could do, you could run this uh, program called JS doc. It saved me a lot of time at my job. And I mean, there's ways you can write in and mark down like yourself. Like, I mean, I think JS doc does a good job of it. So the way you'd run that is I think inside of your dot slash node modules, there's a dot bin file. So that's your binary files. I think so dot bin and then there's a JS doc file in there and then you point it at the file that you want the documentation for so sum.js so now there's an out folder and that gave me a index.html and then if I run that I go live and I bring that here I show you my sum function it's the, all the documentation what I wrote right it's sum and then a and b and then it returns a number takes two numbers and adds them up and takes number to be passed and added to B, number to be passed and added to A, and then an example of how it's going to be used and it returns sum of A and B and the type is a number. So that's all people really need to know. And then it could, it would show you how the code looks inside of here as well. So JS doc's really useful, it's very powerful. I think recently for TypeScript, there's something called TS doc. So I would definitely, you know, take advantage of all the tools that are to be like, like use and like help your uh, team. So yeah, it's all very useful stuff. At the end of the day, ChatGPT is like a calculator we should use, but only when we know how to do the problem solving on our own. We should come up with the edge cases, we should learn how to do testing, and we should be able to document our processes properly. Just remember, if I can do it, you can do it too. Coding saves lives.